Hello, everybody. Andy Roman here. Welcome to Get Real with Andy. This episode is about snakes and reptiles. You know, you've heard that we have a reptilian brain, a mammalian brain, and a higher brain. Somehow there's a recognition that this reptilian part of us is actually part of us. We call it the reptilian. And there's evidence you can see the evolution of all animal life in the evolution of a human fetus. We go through the fish, the reptile, the mammal, the primate, the human. It is a part of us. The thing about snakes is that they are not mammals. There's nothing warm and fuzzy about reptiles because they are neither warm nor fuzzy. In fact, they're cold-blooded. That's why you will see gators and iguanas and snakes come out and sun themselves because they are as warm as their environment. That's why reptiles exist in tropical places. As you can see, I'm in my tree house in Costa Rica. There's over 120 species of snakes here, some of them venomous. There's constrictors. This is a place for snakes. Snakes are cold-blooded, and yet I'm saying that snake energy, part of our evolution is contains snake energy in it, and that is a part of who we are. In different cultures, in different religions, different worldly mythologies, the snake is depicted in many different ways. In some cultures, it, the snake is deified, in some it's vilified. For instance, in Christianity, the snake is depicted as the, the evil one, right? Garden of Eden, responsible for the fall of humanity into, you know, the land of good and evil and duality from the blissful garden. So the snake is the bad guy, the tempter, the uh, beguiler. In Buddhism, it's a little different. When Buddha was sitting under the bow tree, this huge king cobra came, saw him meditating there, went up behind him, raised its head and spread its hood over him to protect him from the rain and from the sun. And so that's a whole different depiction. I want to get back to uh, snakes not being mammals. Snakes are cold-blooded. That means they will perceive the, the other beings in their environment, either something to prey on or something to run away from. So it's a very simple, primitive, reptilian perception of, of the outside world. Snakes are cold-blooded. You could say they have no empathy. That's the snake part of us that has no empathy. You know, a lot of times we associate feelings or states of empathy and kindness and this and that with spirituality. And so you could say that snake energy is the opposite of spirituality. I've worked with many people who were sick and they were really good spiritual people. And these, I've noticed, this is a generality, but I've noticed that some of these people were actually polarizing these energies, good and bad, light and dark. And they had to resist the dark and fight the dark in their own perception. And in my opinion, that just emboldens that part of us by denying it, fighting it, resisting it it somehow has more of a hold on us. And the irony is, in Eastern cultures, in Eastern medicine or Eastern spirituality, the awakening of spiritual energy is depicted, the awakening of the Kundalini is depicted by a snake coming out of the base chakra at the base of our spine. And as it travels up the spine, it awakens all of these neural centers until the crown chakra and enlightenment. And this is the rising of snake energy, not the resisting of snake energy. And what kind of an image do you get when I say a snake going up a staff like the spine? Ah, there it is. That's the medical caduceus. So in Western culture, healing is represented by snake energy rising 
up the spine. It's two snakes. So there's a link right there between healing and awakening spirituality. Now I want to quote Carl Jung. This isn't a direct quote, but he said something like the focus on mental health shouldn't be on the labels of what's wrong with the person. It should be on awakening the numinous experience. And numinous is a fancy word that just means full of light. So he is saying, don't focus on what's wrong, what's broken. That's Western medicine. You know, get a label, get a diagnosis, but focus on awakening the numinous. Help a person grow and develop and awaken spiritually, and that will be the key to their healing. Very different than the Western medical approach and the American psychiatric or even the American um, psychological association. Very different view. They're very much within the medical view of having a diagnosis and labeling what's wrong with the person. There is that whole DSM-5, the Diagnostic and Statistic Manual, where all the different mental health diagnoses are written. And now I want to return to the New Testament. And here's a paraphrase from Jesus. If you want to get to the kingdom of heaven, you must be as innocent as a baby, as harmless as a dove, and as wise as a serpent. Notice, he didn't say as wise as a scholar. He didn't say as wise as an accountant. He specifically said as wise as a serpent. He didn't say be a serpent, but he said be as wise as a serpent. What could he possibly mean by that? I think he meant be savvy in the ways of the world. Don't let yourself get bullied and pushed around by all this snake, cold-blooded, self-serving energy in the world. Be savvy of it. Be as wise as that energy and know how to deal with it which is very different than being a snake. And he's recommending that. It's important for us to know our snake energy. It's within us. Stop fighting it. Stop resisting it. And I have seen in my work at Hippocrates Wellness, a lot of the people that come with cancer diagnoses are really good people who are kind, who put other people's needs ahead of their own who don't know how to say no, who don't really do anger very well. These are people that have what I call the snake energy deficit, and they seriously need to learn you know, how to manifest that, how to embody it, and how to do it right in a way without becoming a snake themselves. Something else we can do with our snake energy is to be found in that image of the king cobra spreading its hood and protecting the Buddha. We need snake energy to protect our growing awareness, our growing, you could call it spirituality, but just self-realization. We need snake energy to protect us and shelter us in this world. It's a really great image and offers a lot of counsel on how, the importance of snake energy. It's not bad is what I'm saying. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.